A life is owed to the darkness. Skeletons in the Closet is a Shutter original directed by Azif Akbar, who's done some films in the past. Check out his IMDb page for the full listing of his work. And this is based on an original story by Al Bravo, and one of the production studios was Al Bravo Films. Gee, I wonder how he got this credit. But nevertheless, at least he got credited for this original story in the largest fucking quotations that my fingers will allow. Don't worry, I'm not tipping my hands as to how I felt about skeletons in the closet, like bodies in a goddamn grave, which is where this goddamn movie should be, in a goddamn open grave where we can piss on it. Nevertheless, let's talk about the other writers, because four other people were credited for writing this movie. Four. Four. You had Joshua A. Cohen, who is not related to the Cohen brothers in any way, or maybe he is, I don't goddamn know. Mira Pack Howard, Koji Steven Sakai, not even Steven Seagal, which is probably a good thing because I'm sure that Koji actually treats people better, unlike Steven fucking Seagal. And also, Terrence Howard gets a writing credit. Yes, Terrence Howard, who has been in some pretty big productions, some pretty well-received films, critically acclaimed. He also has been in some shit. Boy, has he banned some shit, like Skeletons in the Goddamn Closet, which is really what this should have been called, or Skeletons, why the fuck didn't we just burn down the closet so we can make something other than Skeletons in the Closet? But anyway, Terrence Howard also is listed as an executive producer. You know, for the few pennies that this movie allegedly cost, based on the special effects, the framing of the shots, and pretty much everything, pretty much everything about this movie is goddamn awful. Absolutely fucking putrid. Note how I even... Haven't even gotten into the fucking plot yet because there really isn't a plot to speak of. Terrence Howard does play Mark. Oh, hi, Mark, who is a father, ends up losing his job. He has a wife, uh, Valentina, who's played by the incredibly gorgeous Valerie M. Ortiz, who really, really is just incredibly gorgeous, I do want to say. And they have a daughter, Jenny. Jenny, who has an illness, an illness that must be cured. And because he lost his job, she's working hard, and also she has past trauma that gets revealed during the description. And also, as the movie plods along, trips along, snaps both of its goddamn legs, and then drags itself towards the finish line before being run over by an 18-wheeler or by a slow-moving moped. <laughs> Back to a slow moving moped with two flat tires probably would have ran a lot better than skeletons in the closet. So, yes, a mother, Valentina, has been haunted by a spirit since her childhood. And now that her daughter's, well, basically because her daughter is sick, she's going to allow herself to be possessed to just find a way to save her daughter. That's the way it's listed on IMDb. That's not what actually happens, but that's how it's listed on IMDb. All right, this is one of the worst motherfucking horror movies I have seen in years. I cannot understand how anybody involved in financing this movie, unless they need a tax write-off or unless it was mob money thrown at this goddamn thing. And they said, well, shit, we're not going to have pay them back. It's going to be like that guy that borrowed money to run FMW. And I'm just not going to take this movie fucking seriously because this movie didn't take itself fucking seriously. Udo Kier is in this. <clears throat> or Udo Kier. I don't. The weird bug-eyed guy that's always in a bunch of horror movies. You know, that guy that actually seems like he's a pretty good actor. He also has an accent that is absolutely indiscernible from, oh, I don't know anything near Russia, Ukraine, Slovakia, or whatever, despite the fact he's been in many English movies. But I do not understand what the fuck he's saying. Cuba Gooding Jr. is in this. He's in this in the sense that the camera has pointed at him several times. And what happened? What fucking happened to Cuba Gooding Jr.? I know he was in Chill Factor, but he ended up doing Men of Honor. Not Medal of Honor. <laughs> Not Medal of Honor Warfighter. Cuba Gooding Jr. has been in some good stuff. There were also other people in this movie that I'm sure have been in other things. And this is just a bafflingly ridiculous hodgepodge of just messy scene after messy scene after messy scene with some of the laziest special effects I've seen. I've seen stuff from the 60s where they had maybe a shoestring and two quarters to their name and they made the special effects look less superimposed than this. I cannot understand how anybody could have looked at this and said, yeah, that's a great final product. Let's not reshoot any of this shit or just scrap it and not show this to anybody. Let's ask Shudder if they'll take it. Shudder. I don't even think Tubi would have touch this goddamn thing and I've seen shit where they had something like the unborn where it said 
or a line that I use for my intro that will be burned into my memory said, are you trying to tell me that you won't let me feel our baby kick because you think your uterus is haunted? And Tubi, I don't think would have touched this. What the fuck was this actual movie? What the actual goddamn fuck was this? Who thought this was a good idea? I want goddamn answers. Maybe there was a good idea initially, and then it just got ran through the ringer and then had a bunch of people involved. And maybe Terrence Howard said, I need to just ruin a movie. Maybe I'll just blame him for it, because his name and face is all over this goddamn thing, and he can't act for shit in this. And even though he has been able to act in the past, and even though I'm sure that the people that got supporting roles could be good in other movies. I don't know, maybe the cameras just pointed at him and said, look, we're being basically held at gunpoint until we finish this movie, so let's just make it in the worst way possible. Yeah, that's great. This also just forgets about certain things. Certain characters just pop back in. Oh yeah, this person exists. There's a dog. The dog's fine, by the way. Just want to say it's a beautiful uh, border collie type mix, I think. I, I think. We actually had a dog uh, like that, or we were going to get a dog like that, but then we realized we couldn't. Anyway, within the first five minutes, I knew that I was in trouble, but I'm like, you know what? That's okay. It could get better. No, it got worse. It got a lot worse. A ton fucking worse. I'm basically just going to rip this goddamn movie apart because it deserves it. This, I try to be kind. I know that some movies have low production values, and sometimes you're just doing the best you can with the limited resources you have, but there is no way, there is no excuse for a movie to be this motherfucking awful. How dare anybody say that this was worth defending? How dare anybody say this was worth shoving out onto goddamn streaming What instead of just being shoved into the goddamn open grave that it should have been shoved into along with anybody that said that this isn't absolutely shit. What happened? <clears throat> what happened? Was there a good movie in this and it just got made so bad that they just said, well, fuck it, we already financed it. Let's just shove it out there and maybe idiots will watch it like me. But at least I didn't have to pay for it. If I had to, if this got a theatrical release and I watched it, I would have actually walked out. I had to pause this movie, this 91 minute movie, <clears throat> multiple times and just say, I, I do I want to continue this? Do I just want to basically shred half a goddamn movie? I sat through it, thinking that there might be some good things about it, at least stuff I could rip into in an entertaining way. No, I just have to be mean-spirited. I don't fucking care if anybody that worked on this movie gets offended, because you guys can go do whatever you're doing. You're living your dreams. You're doing what you're wanting to do. That's great. And I do actually hope that anybody that has passion for filmmaking can go on to do better than Skeletons in the Closet. It gets referenced a little bit later on, and I just want to say <coughs> Udo Kier is at his most Udo Kiri, where he just... What, what, what the fuck? Was he on drugs? I think everybody in the movie must have been on drugs, at least everybody decided to put this together. This is cable access levels of bad. I have seen movies on low wattage stations, like this one station that uh, was based out of Canada, I have seen <coughs> productions that were done seemingly in someone's house. Stuff I used to rent at Hollywood Video or Blockbuster, I know, dating myself right there. But stuff that at least had more passion than this. What the actual fuck? Again, the fire effects in this were some of the worst I have seen. There were fire effects in Nintendo games that look better than this. And, yeah, I'm going to end up spoiling this movie here in a bit. Not that there's anything to goddamn spoil, because the plot is so goddamn disjointed, it's so goddamn messy, it's a fucking disaster. The ghost effects are absolutely terrible. <laughs> the plot description on IMDb doesn't even end up playing out on film, except in little, little bits. And it doesn't even have a cohesive narrative. It tries to, and then it just gives up, and then it goes back to the narrative, and then it just... It, and it's also simplistic and also in fucking comprehensible. <laughs> there are things about this movie, character motivations, where I'm just thinking, nobody would do this. Nobody would act like this. Nobody would think that this is a good idea. Nobody would think <clears throat> that this movie, um, you know, was actually made by humans. I'm actually convinced this movie may have been written by AI, and they just slapped names on there. Maybe Terrence Howard is AI. It would explain why he was in this and why he acted the way he did. Is Cuba Gooding Jr. all right in the head? I don't understand why he was in this. Who don't care I understand why he was in this? <clears throat> Felt bad for the little girl playing Jenny, because she seemed like she was at least trying. 
Again, there's a dog ant and the dog is fine. I'm going to get in the spoilers. I'm just going to rip the movie apart more in spoilers. It's on Shudder. Three, two, one. Spoilers. There you go. So, <clears throat> the narrator sounded like he was being forced at gunpoint. It could have been uh, Terrence Howard. It could have been somebody they pulled out of their apartment. I don't know. <clears throat> this movie is ass with several S's is what I wrote down. And it was five minutes into the goddamn movie. The jump scares, the ghost effects, everything about this was framed so goddamn badly. I have to wonder, did anybody making this movie actually understand what making a movie was supposed to look like? <clears throat> Anything. You could have made this a full-blown comedy and it would have been better because then at least you would have recognized that the movie shit. The jump scares, the edits, some of the worst shit that I have seen in a while. Mark basically gets fired from his first job, or his job, rather, in the first 15 minutes. <laughs> and it's a tough economy out there. I'm not making fun of this or whatever. I'm grateful that I've been able to work and everything. And t times are tough. Times are tough. But you know what you don't do? You don't do what Terrence Howard did <clears throat> and decide to go to the bar and decide to make a deal with a mobster guy that your brother, played by Cuba Gooding Jr., who recently got out of jail. There are other names for these characters. I don't fucking care. Because the names aren't any good. Because the writing shit, the acting shit, and everything about this movie is goddamn shit. W what? What? How in the world <coughs> could I say anything else is what I'm wondering. I would love for somebody to defend this in the goddamn comments. I really would. Come up with some justification for this movie to exist except how to not make a movie this way. Do everything the opposite of this. So anyway, help it shit is what I wrote down several times on my notes. <clears throat> the woman playing the doctor is beautiful. I would have rather followed her story even if she was just going to play golf or whatever or go to jazzercise. Would have been more interesting than this shit. The... <clears throat> Jesus, their their finances are fucked. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Jenny's cancer comes back. Fuck cancer. Just want to say that right there. It's terrible. No child. No nobody should have to go through it. Nobody, nobody. It's good should have to go through it. I'm just gonna say that. And <clears throat> there's a figure of death, San Santa Muerte, who's you know who who was, showed up at the house because there's a haunting thing that went on <clears throat> with um. With, with what the fuck was her goddamn name? Valentina, that's what it was. Valentina, Valerie, Valerie. Maybe they thought that you know she was in such a bad production that they wanted to give her some similar name because they thought you're totally checked out like we all are. We'll give you a similar sounding name. That's the only explanation I can come up with. The dog was deeply confused by all this. A pretty dog, I just want to say, and it was a very, very happy dog. And I hope that dog has a long, healthy life. Cuba Gooding Jr. is some biker guy that just got out of jail and says, Hey, by the way, there's this guy named Miguel that'll loan you money. I'm not going to tell you anything about it until after you do it. <clears throat> Jenny needs her bills paid, and the parents have mouths to feed, and there is nothing in this world for free, and they can't slow down, and they can't go back, even though they wish they could, because there is no rest for the wicked, and this movie is filled with them. <clears throat> so, he goes to see this <clears throat> Miguel guy, who is in maybe like two other scenes and that's it. This movie is just randomized scenes. It's just randomized shit in scenes. Um, <clears throat> there's a scarecrow that shows up in a flashback about Valentina's childhood life. I would have rather followed the scarecrow. They could have shown 90 minutes of the scarecrow and crows landing on it. You know what? It would have been better than this. The production value somehow would have been better. Rewatch Night of the Scarecrow. Watch Night of the Scarecrow. Watch the movie called Scarecrow that came out in 2003. That was a mess, but at least it was better than this. I don't know if it's coming across, but I really fucking hated Skeletons in the Closet. These 90s special effects and 90s in the worst, most degrading way possible. And I love movies from the 90s, but god damn it. Were the special effects done on a Mac Pro that had 3,000 viruses... I prayed every single day and it still came back. Yeah, I'd pray for this. I'm not religious. I'd pray for this movie to go away and never come back. And then, yeah, Miguel's, Miguel's, told, or Miguel's henchmen tell <coughs> Terrence Howard, I think two or three times in the same scene, don't cross the line. So they are apparently not fans of the proper era of TNA. Um, that's a deep cut for wrestling fans. You know, Terrence could have gotten another job. He doesn't tell his family he lost his job. He ends up drinking a whole lot. Keeps drinking to spend more money they don't have. The fuck is going on with this goddamn guy? What the fuck? 
There's a psychic lady named Madame uh, Futura. <sighs> How is any of this supposed to be scary? Um, it just, God damn it, God. Uh, losing it, losing it, losing it. Okay. Psychic lady basically says, stretch it out before <clears throat> us. I see a lot of pain and misery. And that pretty much describes the movie right there. I can read your future, but I can't change it, but I know someone who can. Come back and see Udo Kier later. Who is named Luke? Not the mage character from Sui Coden 1 and 2, possibly 3? Trying to remember? Anybody that knows Sui Coden games maybe knows who I'm talking about. I would have rather summoned a goddamn powerful windstorm and gotten this thing away. So, he finally says he got fired. Valentina works as a nurse, keeps seeing this ghost after helping children and everything. <coughs> Cuba Gooding Jr. then finally tells him, Hey, by the way, you don't want to fuck with this guy Miguel. You want to pay him back. This money you don't have. He gave. He got half the money to pay the goddamn medical bills. <laughs> and then... Then they go see Udo Kier's character. He says, write this, write your wish on a parchment and come back in 24 hours. What? Okay. Huh? And then <clears throat> the goons just show up. The mob guys just show up. <clears throat> Cuba's going to help Terrence and um, then Valentina's losing it because she's, you know, seeing the ghosts and everything. She doesn't understand what the hell's going on because her memories have been repressed, which was not described in the goddamn description, by the way. I just want to say description is very misleading. So Udo Kier, we he's in this room with this curtain, hugging this snake with this weird tree and this weird smoke effect that looks like they literally turned on a dry ice machine that had about 80% of the filters clogged. Who made these sets? I'm sorry that you probably have your name attached to this because I'm sure that you tried, but what the fuck? So I never wanted to see Udo Kier's snake, but evidently this movie felt that we needed that. <coughs> So, we then get, okay, let's see, let me see, I'm, I, I wrote some stuff on my goddamn notes here, I'm just looking at it, and I can't tell what the fuck I wrote, because the angrier I get, the more furious I write. Um, basically, Valentina never told him about the spirit, even though I guess her memories were repressed, you, you wouldn't say that you've been seeing ghosts? I would tell somebody that, especially in this time of need. Um... <clears throat> And then she she goes to get answers while her daughter's getting cancer treatment. By the way, this wish completely wipes out the debt. The Miguel guy is never seen again, seemingly evaporated into the goddamn ether or into another dimension, which is where this movie deserves to go. She goes to get answers from Luke, and basically he says, "Hey, you need to you need to pay you need to repay this whole thing." I called this thing uh, Psychic half price Books, which is an insult to half price Books. If you have a half price Books there in your goddamn area, <coughs> support them. They're a good chain. So, and then we see the shadows of the night, and this movie will not be all right. I wish that it was stomped into the ground forever and ever. So, <coughs> a man came around and brought the goddamn Santa Muerte, you know, the, the goddess of death, I believe is what it is in Catholic culture. <coughs> or Hispanic culture, whatever culture this movie happens to be focused on. It should be focused on the joy culture, the culture club. <sighs> Jenny's cancer is suddenly gone. That's good. Cancer sucks. Um, who says, hey, by the way, um, you know, you must pay a life in, you know, my, a life is owed to the darkness. And the dog is fine. The dog is whimpering, probably because it wanted to be in another movie. I'd want to be in another movie, possibly another household where people would feed me and take care of me. <laughs> the dog, by the way, was the most fleshed out character in the movie. And it was in like maybe three, four goddamn scenes. <sighs> and then the father, Father Francisco, who um, his name escapes me right now. It's nothing against the guy personally. He's bopped in here and there because they're very devout Catholics, so devout that I think the church is sown in four goddamn mo or four goddamn scenes, in more than four goddamn movies, by the way. I would have rather watched a documentary about the Catholic Church. The Pope's exorcist displayed the Catholic Church better than this because at least it leaned into the bullshit. 
The father says, by the way, I knew you your whole goddamn life. We get some flashbacks. It turns out the dad <laughs> and the mother made a deal. They were going to sacrifice the girl. But the mother sacrificed herself instead of sacrificing this young pregnant woman to save her daughter. So Valentina was supposed to actually not live. She was supposed to die of cancer. Fuck cancer again. And she ends up living. And now there needs to be balance brought back to the world. Because Jenny was supposed to die. Because Valentina was supposed to die. So neither of them should exist. So it's death's design. Oh, God, and I thought, the I thought the Final Destination, the fourth movie, was a really, really bad representation of death. And <clears throat> all this stuff, by the way, is revealed. <laughs> all this stuff is revealed in the last, like, 15 minutes. In the last 15 minutes. The father ends up, you know, having a roof collapse on him with these terrible fire effects that would have not been out of place in an NES game. Or even an Atari 7800 game. And it's coming for Jenny, apparently. <laughs> In the playhouse. The playhouse is shaking. And then her and Cuba Gooding Jr. just stand there two feet from the goddamn thing. The dog seemingly has taken the car to go get some puppy chow, I assume, at that point. I don't know if I'd let a dog drive it. I'd probably let the dog direct the movie because he couldn't do any worse than this. And then they end up at the old place where the house burned down. And the idea is bury the mother's ashes. Udo Kier shows up seemingly with his exposed snake. Have fun on seeing that. And then the Scarecrow shows back up. <clears throat> like the Scarecrow Mrs. King, if it was directed by a sea cucumber. I'm sure that the director is a nice guy, but please, somebody tell me how in the world I can say anything other than really negative shit about everything involved in this movie and everybody. And she traded her life for Jenny. She burns. <clears throat> they, bur they burn. They all burn. After Terrence Howard gets sent through the door by the Scarecrow. I would have rather seen a 90-minute fight with the goddamn Scarecrow. It would have been better than this. So now, <clears throat> it's Mark, it's Jenny, it's the dog. I'm assuming the dog will be driving. And Udo Kier shows up. Don't worry, they'll be back in the Skeleton Closets to The Revenge. F, get the fucking F. If this is not the worst goddamn movie of the year, this beat Night Swim. Night Swim looks like Citizen Kane next to this. Gets an F. Gets a fucking F. This is an embarrassment. This is a goddamn embarrassment of bullshit. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.